Hello friends, this video on potentiometer part 1 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Topics to be covered in this lesson are what is potentiometer, terminal potential difference versus EMF, voltmeter, potentiometer wherein we'll talk about construction, working, EMF comparison of two cells, internal resistance determination of a cell. And then we'll look at some of the problems. So let us first try to see what is a potentiometer. So what exactly is this potentiometer going to do? How does it going to help us? So it is a device which measures the potential difference in a circuit. So I think the name itself tells us, at least gives us a hint about what it is. From the word potential difference, it has got the name potentiometer. Right? So it will measure the potential difference in a circuit. Now when I talk about a circuit, what do I mean? I'm sure that I have already taught you what is potential, what is potential difference. So I do not need to repeat all those things. So just to give you a gist, let us suppose if we have a circuit, maybe somewhat like this. Let us suppose here we have a battery. Now, if we talk, uh, take any two points, say A and B, let us suppose if I say that the potential at point A is VA and the potential at this point B is VB. Now, if the potential at these two points are different, right, that means there is a potential difference between point A and B and due to this difference in potential, the current flows through the circuit. Right? So whenever there is a potential difference existing in a circuit, there is a current flow in the circuit. So if a potential difference exists between A and B, so current flows. So now the question is, why do we need a specific device like this to measure the potential difference when we already have another device called voltmeter? We all ha would have seen voltmeter in our physics labs, right? So when we already have a voltmeter to measure potential difference, so why again do we need another device called potentiometer to measure potential difference? So that is a very important question which comes to our mind. So we will look into that, that what is that which a voltmeter cannot do but a potentiometer can do, right? So I think it is clear what is a potentiometer. Now to, in case, However, I have explained potential difference and all these things in detail, but still if some of you are not remembering what is potential difference, so let me give a quick look at that. What was potential difference? It is nothing but work done per unit charge in bringing the charge from one point to another against electrostatic force, right? So nothing in this world happens for free. So in order to do something, you will have to give something, right? For example, if there is a pen lying on the table, you want to move the pen from one point to another, you will have to spend some energy, right? You'll have to move your hand to take it from that point and keep it to the other point. So for that also, you need to do some work. You need to spend some energy. So similarly, when we say that current flows in a circuit, it is not a magic that current will start flowing on its own. So what is current? It is nothing but a bunch of charges moving from one place to another. So for, the, for that movement of charges also, you need some amount of energy. So some work needs to be done to move a charge from one point to another. So that work done per unit charge is defined as potential difference. So if we say that if this is a charge, so the amount of work which is done in moving it from the first point to the second point is nothing but potential difference, right? Okay, so that was an introduction to potentiometer. So now our agenda is to understand when we already have a voltmeter, why do we need at all the potentiometer? So in order to understand that, let us first see what a voltmeter is and what does it do? So as I said, voltmeter is a device which is used to measure the potential difference. Now, what is it made up of? I mean, what is the construction of a voltmeter and how does it work? Let's have a look. So the voltmeter mainly consists of a coil. Now this coil is again interesting. This plays uh, the most important role in a voltmeter. So the purpose of the coil is to show deflection. 
So what is this coil actually? This coil is suspended between the poles of the magnet, between the north and the south poles. The coil is suspended between that. Now whenever current passes through the coil, it deflects. So the, it will deflect. So what happens is, what actually deflects is a needle. There is a needle which is fixed over a graduated scale. So if you see here, something like this. In this picture, if you see, so this is a graduated scale, right? Where So that we can see the measurements. And there is a needle. So what happens is, the coil is suspended between the two poles of the magnet. So whenever current passes through that coil, the coil will deflect. As a result, the needle will move on this graduated scale. Now when the needle moves on the graduated scale, we can see the measurements during the deflection and that measurement actually tells us the potential difference. Because potential difference is anyways related to the current. Right? Now, this deflection is again proportional to the current because potential difference is also proportional to the current. So when the amount of current flowing increases or decreases, so accordingly the deflection will also increase or decrease. Right? So what else does it consist? It consists of a high resistance R in series with this coil. So that means first we have one coil and then we have a resistance of high value which is put in series with the coil. So we have already discussed about the series arrangement and the parallel arrangement, right? How do we put resistances in series? How do we put them in parallel? So we have discussed all those stuff. Okay, so let us see how exactly does the circuit of a voltmeter look like. So let us look at the circuit of a voltmeter. So it has a coil like this with a needle and with this is connected a resistance R in series. So this is how the voltmeter looks like. So this coil will also have a resistance, let me call that as RC. So C denotes the coil resistance. Now whatever put the two points between which we have to measure the potential difference, we have to connect those two points between these two ends of the voltmeter. Let us suppose if I connect it to a circuit. So let us suppose it is some circuit. This is point A and point B. So if point A and B are connected to the two ends of the voltmeter, so this will measure the potential difference between point A and B. So this structure, so th this combination, so this combination together form the voltmeter. Right. So here if you see these two are the end points or terminals of the voltmeter. So if you take these two points, they are the terminals or the end points of the voltmeter. So they are connected to the points between which potential difference is to be measured. That is point A and B here. Now one of the terminals is connected to the point at higher potential. So generally you will see that the voltmeter has plus and minus sign indicated on it. So these kind of voltmeter will have plus and it, ha it will have two terminals and plus and minus will be indicated. So the plus terminal will be connected to the point which is at higher potential and the minus terminal is connected to the point which is at lower potential. Right. So now when the potential difference between these two points A and B is zero. That means when the potential at point A is equal to the potential at point B. In that case, the potential difference is zero. So what will happen? There will be no deflection in the coil. Right? So that means the first scenario is when the potential difference is equal to zero. In that case, there is no deflection in the coil. Now in the second case, when a potential difference is applied, so let us suppose a potential difference is applied to this circuit. So what will happen whenever there is a potential difference between point A and point B. So a current will flow, right? So current flows, right? So, 
so this current now if you look at this circuit so whenever current flows between a and b some current will also flow through the coil now as soon as current flows through the coil there will be deflection in the coil right so let us suppose the potential difference which is applied is v and the current which is flowing is i right so the amount of current which is flowing through the coil is given by the potential difference that is v divided by the total resistance what is the net resistance of this voltmeter the net resistance of the voltmeter is r plus rc because this r is in series with the rc right so we can say that the deflection which is shown by this coil is directly proportional to the current so as the current increases the deflection also increases right and here we can see that this current is in turn proportional to the voltage that is the potential difference so we can say that the potential difference also changes with the current so the deflection also tells us about the potential difference so thus the reading which is shown in the voltmeter that is which is shown in this coil gives us the potential difference between these two points right is it clear so when there is no potential difference between a and b there will be no current flow so there will be no current flow through this coil also so it will be it will not deflect there will be no deflection so maybe the readings go something like this like this you can see right so it is something like this so here maybe it is zero and then the value keeps on increasing right so when there is no deflection it will be here right so in some voltmeter it is also in this fashion that here it is zero this side it will show the positive deflection this side it will show the negative deflection right so that, that depends on the graduated scale so this is how the this is the basic principle of a voltmeter and this is how it works right so this is how we can measure the potential difference between any two points in a circuit now the question is did you did you notice something that here in the construction of a voltmeter we told that the resistance r should be a high resistance so here you can see it is a high resistance r now the question is thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material find tutors and mentors thank you once again